To begin with the implementation of closed loop control, we first need to understand how the sensor works. And I took some code here that existed before and I just added these three lines. And these three lines, the only uh, thing that they say is there's an encoder on analog port 3. We're going to use this variable uh, for storing the position, which is what the encoder is going to give us. This is the function that is going to uh, allow us to measure the width of those pulses that are coming from the AS5048 position sensor and we're going to print that position into the terminal. You will notice on the setup that I have uh, unplugged the motor and this is the coils of the motors but the sensor is still connected. So right now the motor is nothing but a knob with the sensor and we're going to open the terminal and you can see that there's some numbers appearing there. It reads 133 but you see that there's some spikes, some jumps and that's just noise that's common to, to the sensor. If I rotate it by hand you can see how those numbers increase 600, 700, 800 and after 900 it jumps back to zero so that's where, you, that's where we would consider that a revolution uh, has occurred. So we start from zero it actually doesn't go down to zero, it goes down to five, maybe I see a four there. And then it goes up. This is supposed to be linearly related to the angular um, position. And then when it approaches 900, it gets to 900 and then it jumps back to four or five. So that is a complete revolution. And uh, yeah, this is now a knob sensor. The moment we plug the motor and we write some more code, we will have a closed loop brushless motor, which will also be uh, correctly called a servo motor. For this next step, uh, I have programmed the motor to rotate at a constant speed. And this is uh, still using, or this is going to be using the code from the previous video. So this is uh, rotating, this is open loop control. So that motor is just going in circles. And what we're going to do is we're going to read the sensor with the same code that we uh, just added. And then we're going to report a lot of stuff into the terminal. So we're going to start with this data he header, then we're going to show the step uh, that we are uh, reading the lookup table with and then we're going to get the three values for the three coils uh, This is a PWM values and then we're going to add also the position So when I do this I get a bunch of data We're going to visualize this data using uh, Excel So I made a setup with this uh, two charts. This will be a um, XY chart and this is a polar chart or a radar chart. I'm going to connect to port 4 and this chart is going to start populating. Okay, look at what's happening. As the motor is rotating and the lookup tables are being read and the PWM is being generated to all the different coils at different values, the encoder is reading and what we just saw there is a complete mechanical revolution. Uh, starting here and finishing here is a complete mechanical revolution that is one rotation of the shaft or of the of the truck. The truck goes from 0 to 360 degrees. In the meantime what happens we can see here is we have one cycle of the yellow uh, coil, another one, another one and it's actually 11 cycles that it takes from here to here. So that's how we can better visualize the 11 uh, poles uh, for this motor. One mechanical revolution will have 11 electrical revolutions. So this is one revolution. So we could say that from here to here, it's 360 degrees or electrical degrees since they're uh, related to an electrical revolution. And it takes 11 of those uh, electrical revolutions to make for one mechanical revolution. I hope this is uh, clear. Um, it's going to get a little bit confusing uh, at times, so just uh, rewind the video, watch it again. 
Also something interesting to see is this other uh, sawtooth pattern that we see and that is of course the index. So it's coming from 0 all the way to 47 which is the index that's reading the lookup table. So you can see there how it's uh, reading one uh, electrical revolution and then another electrical revolution. And underneath what we have is a polar chart. So I'm going to talk a little bit more about this and this is a tool that we're going to use to understand uh, what's happening. I will try to hide the encoder just to make it a little bit cleaner. And if we zoom in, what we're looking at is the isolation of uh, one complete electrical revolution and it's graphed uh, around 360 degrees. The next step is synchronization. When assembling these motors, the magnet is pressed into place, but it's not really pressed into a specific uh, aligning with the rotor. It's pretty much pressed there randomly. So there's no consistency on the position of the north and the south of the magnet in relationship to the rotor and therefore in relationship to the internal coils and magnets. Another thing is that when we put the sensor on top of this, we might assemble it like this, but we could also be assembled 90 degrees apart or 180 degrees apart. This will create an offset between the magnet fields inside the motor and the sensed position by the encoder. So the next thing we need to do is synchronize those two. If we come back to this chart, you'll see that the beginning of the mechanical revolution does not match the beginning of the electrical revolution. And this is what the synchronization is all about. We need to get these two to start at the same point and therefore they will also end at the same time. And that's what we're going to do by adding this offset on the code, then we're going to be able to synchronize them accordingly. In the code, we do that here. This number is the offset and that number is the one that will bring those two starts together. This is the offset that will synchronize both the mechanical revolution and the electric revolution start. Now this number is not constant. It's going to vary according to your setup. It's not that hard to find either. You can approximate it visually from looking at here. This tooth measures 48 units. And this is pretty much at the in the middle, so it would be close to 24. And from there, I just started going up and down until I found the, the best uh, match for my application. The best way to test if you, if you have synchronized your motor properly is to remove this part of the code the direction, which is part of the proportional control lines, and just program the offset that you found. These are there for a different reason, so don't mess with these. Just change this one. Right now, the motor is static at this position. If I try to move it sideways, it'll comply. So what you see now is the yellow trace, which is showing the position of the rotor. And the other traces are showing the values of PWM sent to the coils. Now watch as I turn the mechanical shaft. I rotate it and then you can see on real time Arduino is recalculating the combinations of the coils that will lead to that position. So we could say that this motor right now is being redirected to a new position and at that moment is creating the excitation on the coils proper to that position. Let's do it one more time. If I go slow, slow. And if I go fast. And if I stay.